Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you would have seen from the title, in today's video, I'm going to be answering your questions. So as you'll know, I did shoot over a question um, about just over a week ago and I asked you guys to drop me any type of question that you may have on various platforms and you guys responded so thank you very much for not leaving your girl hanging <laughs> but um no thank you so much I'm gonna do my best to go through as many questions as possible that I have here on my phone so just bear with me let's do this thing and I haven't like prepared my answers or anything like that because I really want it to be as natural as possible so let's just talk okay so get comfortable get a drink get some snacks wherever it might be and let's get into this good video question number one comes from Starmy Violet and she asked what do you do for a living um, a couple of other people asked this question including um, Nina Cherie um, so in terms of career what I actually do is I work in digital marketing um, a lot of people may not know necessarily what that is but in a nutshell it's essentially helping brands to market themselves online on online platforms so part of my previous roles have consisted of social media so yes I am on the computer all day. Yes, I can be on Twitter for a huge part of the day, but a huge part of that is basically helping to run social media campaigns, um, whether on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it might be. Um, another part of that would be branding, um, client meetings, which I absolutely love. Um, sometimes, depending on the type of client, you may be assisting on shoots. So a previous client at a previous agency that I used to work at um, was a restaurant based in Jersey. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you might recall that I took some pictures like about two years ago now um, out in Jersey it was all quite a whirlwind trip and all of that kind of stuff but I was actually out there to shoot some food um, because we were building their website and we needed to use the images um, to create content so content creation is also part of what I do what I always have done so whether that's doing blog posts um, building sites um, in essence we the digital marketers are just kind of the online people behind everything that you see um, so when you go on Instagram and you see all these different campaigns and all of this kind of stuff it's kind of us that have been behind it so that's what I do for a living in a nutshell however I am currently not working technically speaking um, as the last place where I was working the role actually did come to an end in September just towards the end of September some people don't even know this because I just haven't got around to telling them yet. So <laughs> if you're finding out via the video, don't take it personally. Yeah, but yeah, so I'm not actually working in a traditional nine to five at the moment. I am looking for something um, that is the perfect fit in that region. But in the meantime, I'm just taking some time to work on a couple of personal projects that I've wanted to do for quite a while now. Um, so anyone that knows me will know I'm the type of person that has always had an entrepreneurial spirit um, and I call it a burden at times because actually I fought with it a lot of times. Like there's this pull for me to do my own thing um, versus you know the traditional route of literally being in you know a nine to five being employed by someone else and during this season what it's really been for me is about confronting that and literally just like exploiting those that potential that is within me exploiting those gifts that are within me exploiting those ideas because yes I am one of those people that have ideas but they haven't all necessarily yet been executed and if anyone knows how it feels to walk around with like a big idea on their heart but not actually execute it it can be very burdensome um, but I'm at a point now where it's like in a way because like I said there is no nine to five it's kind of like do or die <laughs> it's not die because I won't die in Jesus in Jesus name I will not die but you understand it's kind of like it's either now or never like this is the best time for me to launch out and at least try that's kind of the place that I'm at right now doing some things in the meantime such as website builds for people yes I do um, build websites so I'm doing that as well in the meantime and just some other things to kind of you know keep the cash flow going um but if you guys have any more questions regarding that if you want to talk to me about website builds or anything like that shoot me an email at deborachosen at hotmail.com quick plug <laughs> so on to question number two this question comes from the Debbie Fab and this was via Instagram. So she says, as a first year undergrad, the world of internships, selecting future career paths and making good use of time seems so huge and foreign. What advice and tips would you give for first years on reaching their full potential within and outside academia? 
Okay, that's a big question. That's, that's a loaded question. That's the type of question that I wish I had asked in my first year. One of the mistakes that I would say that I made in first year, okay, this is me being raw with you guys, is not really understanding that you have to use your initiative. I know, I know. So the transition from college to university, depending on what your college was like, can be quite a dramatic one because by the time you come to university, you're expected to figure stuff out by yourself. You're expected to, you know, if you don't understand something, you can't be intimidated by the fact that you're in this huge lecture hall. It's your duty, it's your, um, you know, it's up to your initiative to kind of get up and speak to that tutor at the end of the lecture and, you know, get from them whatever you can. It probably honestly wasn't until maybe final year, probably final year, when it all really clicked for me. So when I began to really understand the way that university works, I began to understand that there are so many opportunities, but they're not all, always necessarily going to be um, presented to you. You have to go out and find them. So you have to talk to people. So that's one of the first things that I would advise talk to people so talk to people about what you want to do talk to people about what you don't know you know if you don't know something talk to people about that don't just be content in your not knowing because that how are you ever going to know so if if you're you know you're in a place you're not sure what you want to do find someone to talk to i would definitely advise find someone in a year above you or you know two years above you whatever the case may be that you can look up to um and you can kind of confide in about your career um an ideal thing would be you know if you can find someone that is doing what you think you would like to do and kind of latch onto them so for example um i um when i was in university i was planning on going more into the route of psychology so i would from time to time talk to some of the older years who studied psychology about um kind of how they navigated their final year that kind of thing you know any opportunities etc etc um whether it's journalism whatever it might be basically just find someone that you can talk to and get as much advice from them as possible um in terms of internships and whatnot speak to people that's kind of the key thing to be honest if you see someone doing well talk to them ask them how they did it how they're doing it how they got that internship just don't go through university in like kind of this incubator or with this tunnel vision another key thing as well if your university is good like this is utilize the career section of the careers department they are there for a reason trust me once again i didn't really realize until finally yeah i was like oh y'all can hook up my cv okay where y'all been all my life it's like we've been here since day one so don't make that mistake, okay? Utilise all the resources that are around you in university. Um, question number three comes from Claude Williams. Um, hey Claude, how you doing? <laughs> Claude is a friend of mine. Um, and he asked, um, will you ever consider doing a Deborah Chosen event? Now I know why he asked this, <laughs> this is literally putting myself out there. Um, so for context sake, so that you guys know, like I said, Claude is a good friend of mine. And a lot of the times, one of the things that we talk about is kind of aspirations, um, goals, um, our potential, and just kind of reaching it in essence. He's just one of those friends that um, connects with me in that sense. So one of the things that has been on my heart for <laughs> years, yeah, is the desire to do a sort of event. Um, where I basically bring women together and we discuss things that pertain to us, particularly in the area of careers and in the area of chasing your dreams, because that's something I'm just so passionate about. Um, you know, not everyone will know this. And hopefully as some projects unfold, you'll get to understand this a little bit more, my passion. Um, but nothing kind of gets me as riled up, as stirred up, as excited as seeing anyone but in particular a woman pursue her dreams um, and so for me I've always kind of envisioned this platform um, where different women can kind of gather together see women who have done great things so share their story in a very honest and candid way um, but in a way that is relatable in a way that you can pick up from them any mistakes that they made but also good things that they did so that with the hopes that you know everyone leaves that event feeling like I can do this because I know probably more than anyone how it feels to have a dream within business but not necessarily have the courage or the confidence or even the resources um, to go ahead and execute that dream and I know that in my kind of journey towards um, launching out 
there have been so many different women who I've looked up to and who have inspired me. I consider them to be like mental mentors. And I know how much of a source of encouragement that's been for me and a source of motivation. And so I feel like I'm in a place where I just really want to create that sort of avenue for other women to benefit from that. Um, so that could take shape in an event, um, as he suggested. So to answer his question, yes, I have considered it. And it is something that I am definitely working towards. Um, I would love you guys' feedback. So if that is something that you'd be interested in, leave me a comment, whatever, let's get talking. Um, but I'm probably going to do it anyways, whether you like it or not. <laughs> but it's just a matter of process. Like I said, there's a couple of other things that I want to get out prior to doing that. Um, but yes, I would love to do a Deborah Chosen event. Next question comes from Denai Ang. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and she asked via Instagram, do you think you will ever pursue poetry and music again? So, big question. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, if you go way back to this channel, like way, way, way back, my first few videos were actually um, doing music and poetry. Um, I, in, in essence, I was a spoken word artist. It feels really weird to say that now because it feels so far from me. But at one point in my life, yes, I did do spoken word and I was super passionate about it. But it wasn't like, it wasn't like I even realised that it was a big deal, if that makes any sense. It was just, for me, it was just another form of expression. Um, you know, at the time I just, I just naturally wrote poetry and I was in a place where I confidently was able to share it. And you know how it is at university, there's just so many different events, so many opportunities for you to exploit your talents. And so yeah, gradually, you know, I'd perform at Leicester, I'd perform at Nottingham, etc, etc. I'd kind of go around and, um, did the whole poetry thing and it was great it was really good and then eventually I brought in a guitar and I started doing a singing thing and like I don't know I, d I did music it was quite peculiar <laughs> but really 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 fun really great time um now what had happened was I graduated and it was actually a gradual process that I just found there wasn't a platform to perform on anymore. I know that sounds crazy, but you know, going from the university setting back to home to Birmingham, and at the time, Birmingham hadn't really grown in the music and arts to like in the way that it has now. So there really weren't all these open mic nights or anything like that for me to kind of continue to grow this talent through. So I think looking back, I think that was a huge part of why I stopped. Um, another part was just that my focus went elsewhere. You know, when you graduate, suddenly you don't really have the time for frivolous things like creativity. You need to get a job. So my energy probably just went into different avenues such as, you know, work, um, making money, all of that kind of stuff. So it kind of withered gradually. Um, in terms of would I ever return to it, um, for me, I'm the type of person that doesn't really like to force things, um, especially creative things, especially creative things. So you might have noticed when it comes to even YouTube, if I'm not in the zone to make a video, like generally speaking, I won't force myself to make the video because I don't believe that art should be contrived. Um, so honestly, it's not a never, it's just an if that, feeling comes back to me if that inspiration comes back to me you know some people ask me do I still write and I do still write um from time to time I will share poetry on my blog um but I don't know you just go through different processes where some things are to be shared and some things are just not and like I said I still write but I'm less likely I feel less inclined to share it with people um but yeah I would I would kind of love to go back to it but like I said it's just a matter of kind of if that inspiration comes back again Good question, thank you for asking. And hey girl, by the way. <laughs> Next question.